we're walking our guests up like they doing a night show. <laughs> Gotta get your intro in there smoother. How you doing, young blood? How you doing? <laughs> so just just so you know, talking to the mic won't have won't have Jimmy Fallon money. You gotta talk into the mic. <laughs> okay. All right. Low okay, cost cool. budget. Okay. Welcome. All right. So welcome to the show. Uh, this is Olivia Hernandez. She is from Microsoft. And can you tell us a little bit not about Microsoft because we really don't care. And I'm just playing. We're gonna get to that point later. <laughs> but what we really want to hear about is the platform that you have for the young ladies. Uh, your your educational platform that you work on. Can you tell us a little bit about that in yourself for the introduction? Yeah. So I think you're referring to Digi Girls. Yes. yes. Uh, so with Microsoft, um, what we do is we focus on providing resources and education. And one of the platforms. Am I doing this? You got it. Mm -hmm. Sorry, guys. This is live stage editing. Sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. So it's through a program called DigiGirls. So okay. Hold on. I'm sorry. One more time. We're going to stop this real quick. You don't have to look at us. We'll look at you. Oh. You can just look straight ahead into the camera. You're talking to the people. Like 30,000 people watch this every other day. Mm -hmm. It's the number where we want it. It sounded good. I mean. So is this how I go viral? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Just look yeah. straight ahead. Talk right into the mic. We'll, Perfect. We know you're passionate about it. We do not have to have the eye contact. Okay, I think I was trained that way. I know, it's cool. <laughs> uh, yeah, so DigiGirls is a program that we, um, we execute on a, on a monthly basis, or um, really our, our campaign initiative is in October. But what we do is we try to educate girls, youth, females, women, uh, in regards to IT, just because we've noticed that IT in general is a very male-dominated uh, industry, and so we're trying to break the barrier, right? So what is it that we can do? Um, can we provide awareness and education? How do we make it fun and understandable so that uh, really we, we don't, we're not scared of it, right? Mm. Because I think we, we think of IT and we kind of think, no, 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 I don't do IT. I don't know how to work a computer, but it's right. not that at all. There's so much more that goes behind it. So we're just trying to break that barrier. So I got a question. Everybody in the audience, all 400 of you guys, when you saw Olivia coming to the stage, did you think she was in IT? Ah. Silence. So my first question is going to be based off of the crowd's response. You have a typecast for one, being a woman. Yeah. You have another typecast for being an attractive woman. Then you have a typecast of being an attractive woman in South Florida. And you're breaking into an industry that's male dominated. How are you helping these young ladies or outside of your program, even yourself? What was your experience of breaking down that typecast as you mm -hmm. pursued your career? You know, I'll be completely honest. Uh, and I'll tell people, especially uh, educators that don't want to do this because they're scared themselves to do uh, coding in classes, that I'm not a, I don't consider myself a coder. I didn't know how to code before Microsoft. And to be honest, I don't really do coding now. Like, I don't know Java or C++. I shake my head and I play it cool like I do. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I don't. But I think it's when we think of coding or the IT world or tech industry, I think um, if we look at how innovative it is, I think it's just so exciting that it's not just fixing a computer or creating a program, but it's way more than that, right? Um, especially for you know, the Insta-famous stars out there. How do we use technology to take the picture, to edit the picture, and how we upload it? So I think just changing the way we think of um, technology in general is the first, first start to breaking that barrier. Um, but yeah, and I think also when you realize, for me, I have to teach kids how to code, anywhere yeah. from 8 to 13. And I choose to do that. And I, the first time I did that, I wasn't planning on it. I had one of our team members um, scheduled to leave the coding class. And I realized that, oh my gosh, she's not, she's not capturing their attention. She's right. not um, enticing enough. She's not making it fun for them. So I, I jumped in and really just watching uh, the videos they had, I kind of thought of it as, it's really like English class, like grammar, right? So what's the object? and coding it's really the noun in a sentence so i think q knows you better than me but what is your actual job at microsoft uh so my title is community development specialist i usually say because people don't really know what that is 
um, marketing and events. So I do marketing and events for Microsoft at the Aventura, uh, at the Aventura Mall. Oh, okay. Cool. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, yeah. yeah. So, Olivia, with uh, DigiGirls, with DigiGirls and, you know, teaching women and females how to code, um, what are what are some of the barriers that you have to break down with the kids when they say to you? Because I can imagine, I know kids, that they probably say, I don't know how to do that, or I can't do that. That's not for me. Like, how do you help break that down? I think when you can find a way to make it relatable to what they like or what they do, I think it's so much easier. And I think making it fun to learn, mm -hmm. regardless of the, the topic, breaks the barrier. Uh, when I think of girls specifically, it's, okay, how can we make it relevant to you? It's not just, um, again, it's not just the engineer behind it, right? But we have girls that, um, I worked with Tiffany with uh, Girls Make Beats, um, and she works with girls in regards to DJing. So there's so mm. much technology that goes behind it. I'm thinking, okay, well, that's, like, that's a fun cool way to do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so just make it relevant to them. And I think once they understand and you have the patience to kind of walk through what it is, it's, it's kind of like a whole new world for them. Now, I was really surprised um, that people, uh, schools can bring their kids to the Microsoft store and get free coding classes, and they can sign up for as long as they like. Yeah. Right? Yeah. How, how did that come about? So I think um, when Microsoft started their retail stores, that was, a, that was a big thing, right? So beforehand, we couldn't approach Microsoft when we had a problem on their device or their service um, or office. I'm sure that had nothing to do with the Genius Bar at the Apple stores. No, nothing at all. I don't even know what that is. <laughs> uh, so we created Microsoft stores, and I think, the, the, for me, the exciting thing that differentiates Microsoft from any other uh, retail store and retail or technology retail store is that we have my role. Um, we we find that we have yeah. the dedication to really work with the community and provide these resources. Everything that we do, that I do, is free of charge. Uh, so education is a big push. SMB, small to medium sized business resources and events are a big push. Nonprofits. I mean, Microsoft pays a nonprofit for the volunteer work that I do which is crazy. They get paid $25 per hour per person. Uh, so those are the things that are pretty exciting. But that, yeah, that's, it started, it's always been the focus since Microsoft Retail, Microsoft retail stores have been in place. And I, I think now, what, seven, 10 years into being a retail store, we're really trying to focus and get it right with our programming. Um, so education definitely always has been a big push and will always be a big push. I know the Surface was one of the big uh, changes for Microsoft to get into the art industry. Yeah. Um, a lot of people started replacing their Wacom tablets with the Surface because it had the same tools and it was actually about a couple of milliseconds faster, which makes a big difference as an artist. And I've actually spoken at one of the Microsoft engagements up in Boca Raton. Good. So I guess my thing is Microsoft is making such an impact but I still haven't really seen them in diverse communities. Mm -hmm. They're kind of still strategically placed, Aventura, Boca Raton. They're still strategically placed in places where you're not reaching those that are getting the least. So what, is the, what are the, some of the changes that maybe we're not aware of that Microsoft is focusing on when it comes to inclusion? Because it's a lot going on. Um, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation is doing a lot. But what are some of the elements that you see they're changing with these stores because... There's a, lack of better words, I mean, there's a shit ton of things that you can do yeah. at the Microsoft store that you're just not going to get the opportunity to do at an Apple store. Yeah. So what is going on that maybe we're not aware of right now? I think, um, I think regardless of, of what you're looking at, you're only as good as the tools that you have, right? So when we're looking at engagement, that's essentially why they have my role. So we are the grassroots marketer for the Microsoft stores in every community. And I understand every community is different um, and every community functions different. There are different groups and things like that. So I think when we're thinking of breaking through different demographics in each community, it's really up to the local community development specialist to drive that on your local level uh, so that you, you'll kind of see me and I'll, I'll try to break in. And I was talking to Q and I was like, there's so much going on in Wynwood and Black Tech Week and all this stuff. And 
I, I was just completely ignorant until I saw something on Instagram and Facebook and Twitter. And so now I'm kind of doing the work here locally to get more involved with other groups and organizations um, to provide that inclusiveness with Microsoft. Sounds like we're going to get some free tablets, guys. Free tablets. You have a pitch yes. competition. Yes. I know. We do, yeah. You can get your, pitch, uh, your free tablet at the pitch competition <laughs> hosted October 4th. Oh, I'll come right. by and start store. winning every pitch competition just because yeah. start reselling know, the tablets. Right? Now, Olivia, there's one thing on a IT side. Where do you feel Microsoft is going to go next? I know there's a big focus on augmented reality that's coming up. You may not know this answer, so if you don't, that's cool. But this is the nerd side of the show. So you have augmented reality that's coming up. Um, as much as I'm a fan of iPhone, I feel the smartphone itself is about to hit a peak of what it can and can't do. Yeah. At this point, you're just paying for an upgrade. Um, so what, what are the next big technological advances that we can expect from Microsoft. What do you think is coming up next? Uh, our big push will definitely be cloud services. That's kind of our Oh, thing. yeah, that's what I... So you guys are heavily involved with uh, IBM sure. Watson and stuff like that. You're, a lot of your uh, artificial intelligence. We have... Art yeah, that. But uh, when we're thinking of cloud services... Um, Really, we're thinking of the servers, okay. cloud-based, right? Um, which I think Amazon uses. All of our, uh, a lot of our competitors tend to use our cloud services. Mm. So that's that. Is that A Z U R E? Is that the A Z U R E? Yeah, Azure. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so cloud services and computing will be, I think, the next big push or focus when it comes to Microsoft. Um, we've always seen it kind of in the SMB or enterprise world, but. Mm. Uh, now Hold on, on you got to break that down. Make sure they know what SMB, SMB. is again. Small to medium-sized business. Okay, go. Okay. Go ahead and put that in the acronym list. Yes, yes. Um, so, yeah, that's always kind of been there for the enterprise world on a uh, smaller, I guess, SMB level, small to medium-sized business level. Um, we've noticed in retail stores, we're launching Microsoft 365. So for those businesses that come into the store looking for licensing and office and um, servers that we couldn't provide before, we're now providing for those small and medium types of businesses. Um, I think when you talk about augmented reality and VR, obviously we have the HoloLens, which is a, an amazing product. Yeah. If you haven't tried it, I mean, I think the Broward Main Library has it for free to try out. Great, uh, great product. I think even that, it's, it might be before its time, in my personal view. I think it's an awesome product. It could definitely be beneficial for schools, colleges, education, um, architects. There's so many different uses that could come out of it. But we don't have the developers behind it just yet to create and make it available for the consumer. I think it's going to be a, uh, it has the potential to be an amazing device. Yeah. Almost kind of, it's, when I see the, the, um, the marketing and the videos that go behind it, it's kind of, I don't know, like minority reportish. It's mm. kind of, it's different. Yeah, I had, we had a gentleman yeah. that came to Venture Cafe. Um, can't remember his name right now, but he was recruiting more graphic designers and designers to design the 3D content yeah. for virtual reality and for the HoloLens. He works for Microsoft also. Okay. And I was like, he was like, we, we know what we want. We literally don't have nobody to create it. Yeah. So you guys are almost a step ahead exactly, of yeah. the content itself. Yeah. So you're waiting for the content to catch up with you because I know they're using the HoloLens and the, the, it's being used a lot for the medical field. Mm -hmm to yeah. uh, stimulate surgeries and things like that yeah. to be able to see the human body, exactly. how the tissues and the muscles yeah. will tear. So that's actually pretty cool. It's really cool. Big yeah. advancement for the medical field. Exactly. Well, I think it could be used outside the medical field too. Right. There's so many uses, yeah. Yeah, I don't really see how it's going to help with opioid overdoses, but it sounds great. Go ahead, Akia. <laughs> <laughs> I'm wondering what you're seeing. I know when I was in the store for your pitch competition, there was a much older crowd looking to enter into the world of apps, innovation, technology, and um, how are you grasping the people in the middle? I don't find that the people in the middle are as drawn to tech and innovation as the older crowd and the younger crowd. Can you define the people in the middle? Yes, yes. Q, please. I was just about to ask you to do that. Great question, uh, Olivia. 20, 25 to 40. Okay. 25 to 45. Mm -hmm. And the question is, how do I connect with them? Yes. Or how am I connecting to with bring them? them into that space um, to get them more engaged and mm -hmm. to yeah um, I think you know Q the struggles that we're kind of and I'm, I'm trying to work with gurus to kind of see how I can connect with audiences um, when we look at the young professionals I, I think I would call the 25 to, to 40 is that yeah. what you're saying mm -hmm. um, 
I've noticed that when I have people approach me for events or partnerships and they fit within that age range, mm-hmm. it tends to be more for the fun aspect or um, some may be more of like the um, development part. I have an answer. Yeah, tell me, please. Alcohol. <laughs> we can't provide that at the store. Trust me. That's my answer. We would, that would be, yeah. <laughs> I, I'm yeah. being honest. What, 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 what? That's how you bring in 25 to 40. What? Whenever you scream alcohol, they flop. I don't think so they'll ever come then. <laughs> now you, we, you wanted to do, so it was drink and sip. Now you want to do drink and code? I just don't see that working out. Hey, listen. That's a very, you know, you know you can miss a comma in coding and the whole thing would not work. We are talking about attraction and how to get people involved in technology. So I'm going to counter that just like uh, with all these real estate offers we're going through. Shout out to last week. Um, The counter to that would be tell them about the potential of the money they can make. That's how you, that's how you influence that. So. Anybody out here that knows anything about cybersecurity, does anybody besides you two can't answer this question? So Dante, David, don't answer it. Double D. <laughs> so um, does anybody know the average salary of somebody in the cybersecurity world? No? Somebody want to take a guess? How much? I heard you. What'd you say? You were close. Say it. Say it again. That's about right. So in cybersecurity, with no college degree and with your cert- certifications, you can start off at around eighty to $90,000 if you have all your certifications in place. All right. Um, if you are a, I can't remember the term. What's the second term? Uh, ethical hacker. Ethical hacking, too, yeah. can make about one hundred and twenty-five dollars to $130,000. You literally sit around watching computers waiting for something to happen. It's not really a hard or stressful job. But the best thing about uh, cybersecurity, there's about 1.5 million empty positions in the world right now. Uh, shout out to Equifax for not having the right cybersecurity <laughs> team. We know y'all ain't sponsoring nobody. Y'all about to be broke. But um, from things like that, so cybersecurity, the more we live our life in the cloud, the more people you're going to need on cybersecurity teams and uh, security operational centers to actually overlook these things. So. You guys are providing the cloud. Has Microsoft thought about getting into protecting the cloud? Like, why not kind of be Zeus and protect the kingdom? You know October is Cybersecurity Month, right? I did not know oh, that. Oh, wow. There you go. Thank you. Yeah. So I guess we're going to have to bring some people on for cybersecurity next month. Thanks so, yeah. to Olivia. <laughs> it's on camera now. That's cool. That's but are you guys, I mean, I, Nor- Norton went crazy and started thinking that everybody in the world was chasing him. So who's going to be the Norton of cybersecurity? What are we? So I, and I can't dig too deep into it because I don't know um, a lot of oh, the cybersecurity aspect to it. I thought you say because it, I'm not allowed to talk about it. <laughs> Stop secret. Yeah. I'm not that high up yet. Okay. That's a pro view. <laughs> no, but they do have, um, I know, uh, I know uh, cybersecurity is a, it's a huge focus, right? So right. we have Windows Defender on the new, uh, any, anything that has Windows 10 installed in it, automatically comes with that, right? Like that's the focus on the consumer side, but also on the SMB and entrepreneur side. Um, but on a, I think on a local level, I think the opportunity we have is when it comes to programming and events, is providing valuable resources that we can teach on a local level to these people to find value. Like I can show you a presentation, tell you what it does and how to, you know, what it, what it looks like in the pricing. But for someone to come in, um, they want to know how to do this. Like, what does it help them with? How to protect their uh, their enterprise or business? And we can only do that to a certain extent. Right. And that's when I bring in our partners like you and everyone else who, that's their job. That's what they do year round um, to bring them in and provide a little bit more value and add on to what we can offer. Uh, but yeah, in general, Microsoft is huge on cybersecurity uh, on a consumer and enterprise level. Me and Selfborn are going to start a cybersecurity company <laughs> called the Avengers. Okay. And, right. like, the services are going to be named after the different Marvel characters in the Avengers. That's how we're going to name oh, the service. Cool. Whatever works. Just trademark that. <laughs> Shout out to Marvel. So, Q, you watched the show. We got to do the quick six because it's about time to wrap her up. So, mm-hmm. the, uh, we have a question from the crowd? Oh, Lord. This I got is a Rosie. challenge. I have a challenge for Olivia. So, Rosie is filling in for Q's position, and Q yep. is filling in for Latoya. This is awesome. Teamwork. Oh, Teamwork makes the dream work. 
So we have a question from the audience um, around the Digi Girls. They wanted to know, so they looked online to see if they could find where um, the events are located as far as the workshops. They were only able to find something that's showing for middle and high school students and wanted to know where they could find events for women, or as we were mentioned earlier, like 25 to 40 plus. I think when we're looking for Digico Girl programming for uh, women, I would advise that you contact your local CDS, so Community Development Specialist, would be, which would be me, um, or the Dayton Store, Boca. Uh, we don't have that curriculum already in place. Our focus is on the youth. Uh, however, I do, when I work with partners, I do say, listen, we're pretty creative and flexible. Um, if you tell me the audience, we're working to kind of create and mold that curriculum to fit that audience. So if we're looking at for women who are interested in that, what I would typically do is uh, work with our corporate offices to see who can we invite as a speaker um, or a, a coding guru to provide you with the resources um, and get you involved in that way. So, so it's not there yet, but you're, you're capable of building it. You can make uh, yeah. it happen. That's yeah. what's up. Yeah. So Q, you got one more question before we do our hot six? I don't have a question. I just have a comment. So we could probably go ahead and do that. Digi awesome. Grass, Digi Girls, yeah. make that happen. Speaker, 25 to 40. We need to please the audience. Thank you. Oh, all right, Q. <laughs> Q, Q just taking Q. over my job. Q, Q. I'm up for it. <laughs> all right, so Olivia, uh, drink of choice. Are you drinking craft beer or craft cocktail? Craft cocktail. What's the cocktail? Uh, I wish I knew. So I'm the type that I always go to my standard vodka water with like cucumber. Just because, hold on. Just because I don't like having to think or make up a decision. Like I like the same stuff. It's super easy and fast. If I'm with people and they have suggestions, I'm like, you know what, take over. Order for me, I'm good with it. If there's a good mojito on the, on the, um, on the menu, I'll take that. So but. vodka, water, and cucumber. Yeah, mold cucumber. It's I've really never good. had that. I'm going to try it. I that. have never either. It sounds like old ice and a cucumber. But. <laughs> I'm good with it. <laughs> That's dope. Go ahead, Q. Uh, I would like to know, what is your favorite place here in South Florida since you've moved here? Favorite place in South Florida? Uh, I would, I'm just going to keep it generic and say the beach. Yeah. I know this is, I know, I know, I know. It's all right. It's so all right. it's. People love the beach. It's okay. You don't have to defend it. <laughs> but the thing is, I don't typically like the beach. Like, I don't like, I don't enjoy going to the beach because it's so hot and humid and I don't like the sand and I just, it's not fun for me. But if I go there, <laughs> hold on. But if I go there, if I'm running, I'm I always like to run early in the morning or late at night when there's a sunrise or sunset at the beach and just chill and kind of like meditate and reflect. That's a good okay. time. Okay. Right? All right. See? There's some okay. justification behind it. Uh, if you had to pick a song as your theme music to define either you or the work you do, what will be the song of choice? I knew you were going to ask me that. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I would say anything from Beyonce. Anything from Beyonce? Okay, a lot of things from you Beyonce. You sure? Because Beyonce has a lot of them. <laughs> I think you might want to pick a song because yeah, this is going to turn into a real bad joke real fast. <laughs> don't do yourself like that. Pick I, a song. I don't have a song in mind. Just pick one. The one you just thought about that you thought you shouldn't say, but you just thought of it anyways. What was that song? That wasn't even a thing. I'm telling you. Like okay. I don't. I'm really bad with favorites and right. choosing. So I have lemonade. <laughs> say my name. I'm gonna help you out. I'm gonna say, say who name. who runs the world, girls. Thank you. Look, there you go. Good yeah. say. He tried to give you I, lemonade. I, I lemonade. was about to go all like trauma. Well, I had like 18 good Depressed. ones that made absolutely no sense to what you could have said. But I appreciate all right, go ahead, you. Q. Actually, I'm gonna steal one of Mike's questions and say if you had to put your life in a movie, which one would it be? Ooh, good oh one. God. Come on, Olivia. Uh, this, is not, this is not a good game for me. This, this is, is not a great a good game. game. Uh, if I had to put myself, if I had to put my life in a movie, which one would it be? I wish I knew. Um, I'm just going to say Forrest Gump because that's just my favorite movie. <laughs> Forrest Gump. Life, life is, is like, like a, a box, box of chocolate. chocolate. That's all right. automatically what you go to. I'm from South Carolina. It's well, that's good. Now, Q, ask one more question, and then I'll close it out with the He's last. trying to haze me right now. I know you just did that. And I got a challenge before after the last question. Okay, gotta, go ahead, Q. One more challenge. question. Um, let's see. What is your favorite food and why? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> don't tell me you don't know the answer to that either. I'm telling you, I'm very situational. Okay. There's some good food for specific moments, and I don't have a favorite. Like, right. I like a good okay, I know for specific moments. 
So after you've been completely plastered. Okay. <laughs> there, the, even then, there's a few places I will say. What do you DC? feel like eating right now once you get off the stage? Um, Let's go with that one. Right now I'm on like a healthy kick, so I do like. <laughs> so you would get like a bowl like from Delta or something. Yeah, she yeah. want kale. Yeah, you don't smell all that cheese no. in the atmosphere. Yeah. I'm good. With that. Awesome, man. All right, so last question. Five years from now, perfect headline is running from the Miami Herald. It's about Digi Girls. What does that headline read? What does that headline read for Digi Girls? Perfect headline in Miami. Um, it would read. It would probably be a number stat of X amount of girls now into IT because of DigiGirls or something. Something that has value for the behind it. All right. So if somebody can get Della's to open back up and get some cucumbers so somebody can, <laughs> <laughs> so somebody can buy Olivia a drink. Thank please, you. Please. So we need a cucumber. So Please, ready. yeah, thank okay. you. Thank okay. you, Della. Della is here. Shout out to Della with Win Yard. <laughs> Della is going to get her a cucumber so we can make her a vodka water and cucumber drink. Yeah. Olivia. Thank you very much. So, everybody give a round of applause for Olivia. We, well, I got I got a challenge. Oh, I'm sorry, question. the challenge. Done yet. Oh, he we had done. the challenge. What's the challenge? Because this is her time. This is her time. Like, so imagine we just walked into, let's say, a community center or let's say a, a kindergarten, let's say a, a grade school. Give me your, and first let me preface with, Matrix explained a lot of nerdy stuff for people who were in the movies, but not necessarily into coding or understood computer language. Give me your elevator pitch to a room full of like children, let's say, let's say. So basically how does she get children involved in tech? No, the pitch, not how, I but the, the actual What's the blue pill, blue pill, red pill pitch Talk to, to, me. to kids? There that, we go. That's what he want to say. What is your blue pill and red pill pitch? You got to do it in four sentences or less to get kids to come and be involved Challenge. in Digi Girls. Go. What's I the usually pitch? just say, hi, I'm Olivia Hernandez, community development specialist for Microsoft Naventura. I get to do cool things like work with you guys and come to your school as my job. And, and then, then they respond? Yeah. Okay. That's pretty right. it. We'll take that. Yeah. yeah. Things you can get away with when you. I have a feeling right? you're about to be much, much more busy, Olivia. Right after this, oh, I agree. I hope so. All right, guys. So you have three songs. That means you have enough time to place an order of food, get another drink. We're gonna bring back our second part of the show, which will be based around media and radio, social media and radio. So we'll be right back. Three songs. That's about eight <laughs> minutes. <laughs> Alright, we're back for part two and we want to go ahead and give a special shout out to Miko Branch of Miss Jessie's for supplying all the products for the beautiful ladies out there. Ladies, give a round of applause to Miko Branch from Miss Jessie's for supplying you. Our first official, well, yeah, nah, because Timeline is our own stuff, so yes. Our first official product sponsor was Miko Branch. She came out and enjoyed the store so much. She now supplies all the beautiful women of all colors with great hair with products. So, shout out to Miss Jessie's. You see that? You see that Miko? He had to move the string to make sure the logo got a proper shot. <laughs> Product placement. So, we are here with our superheroes of the media and radio industry. I have already been hazed by the partner of one of the ladies, women in the radio. <laughs> Uh, yep, I am crazy. That's what makes the show work. Otherwise, it'll be a whole bunch of nerds just talking about stuff. Over back. I love female superheroes. Oh, yeah. Like, when I went to see Wonder Woman, oh, my God. I had an amazing time. I have a feeling I'm about to lose on this panel, bro. <laughs> I think you are. I'm here with you. I'm here with you, brother. That's right. Self in the back, Batman. We got this. We got this. All right. So, ladies, uh, Claudia and Megan, um... Why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself and briefly, because we got a lot to talk about, briefly tell us about what you do and um, give a little introduction about yourself. Oh, okay. All right. My name's Megan Taylor. See um, that radio voice? Everybody, all the guests. See how she spoke up, arched her back, vocal pipes, and she spoke into the mic? Sure radio did. voice. 
But I own Women in Radio, which is a community for women in radio, and we also deal with women who do po- um, podcasts. And um, I started a year ago in uh, July 2016, and it's just taken off since then. All right. Let's give a round of applause. She says she does not work for, but she owns. Well, I still work for people. It's okay, but you own. <laughs> Eyelashes popping though. Them Thank eyelashes you. look like they weigh about three ounces a they piece. They might. <laughs> she got the la la. Well, them things are fabulous. Boy. Eye game strong. Fabulous. Go. Let's go ahead, Claudia. She has the Megans, not the la la. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, <laughs> okay. Check. Go ahead. <laughs> My name's Claudia, and I do digital marketing at Ocean Bank, and I've been doing digital marketing, social media since 2009. I started at Tiger Direct and then Hilton Hotels, and I also started the campaign at Tiger Direct where we were the first tech retailer to accept Bitcoin. And so it y'all all- thought I bought a I Bitcoin that. randomly, yeah. huh? Can plug, we pause for a second for everybody plugs. that builds their own computers? Because Tiger Direct was one of my favorite places. Absolutely. Oh, if you are a real yeah. nerd, you know about Tiger Direct. Yeah. Build a whole computer. Aventura was. <laughs> Aventura. <laughs> Yo, I was pissed. Watch y'all close. I gotta stop right now. I'm mad at you. Watch you close. Watch you close this store. They closed the store. No, no I'm mad because they did an online thing. No, no, it's yeah. it's advancement because ain't no yeah. nerds trying to come out. The exactly, house. that's why I'm order mad. everything. I, 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 the nerds are sellouts and they left us for Amazon. Ah, oh, that's oh. right. True. Oh. Yeah, that's true. Oh. So there you have it, folks. Bombs. <laughs> right. You can't even say anything to that. You just nah, not really. That's yeah. kind of a wrap. All right. So we're gonna start off with you, Megan. Women in radio. Okay. You should have this stat. If you don't. We have to reevaluate your whole company. No, I don't, but go ahead. <laughs> How many women are in radio in the, in the Tri-County? How many women are in radio in the Tri-County? So yeah. that's Miami, Broward, Palm Beach. You want me to name them? Are you going to, like, spit it fast? Because if you're going to do, do it, I, I want you to name them. So we got six. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Sophomore, throw the music on real quick. <laughs> Drop the music down real low. Right. We, if you're going to name them, I mean... You're going to outshine me, outshine me all the way. This is going to be a segment. Go. Okay. We got Super Cindy, Shelby. We have Felicia Monet. We have um, Stitches. We have um, Evie from Power 96. We have Gigi Diaz from iHeart. We have, who else do we have? In Palm Beach, I know we have Sequoia. We have Chelsea Taylor. She's on the country station. I bet you didn't count her. And um, <laughs> I ain't count none of them, but go okay. ahead, girl. So we probably thing. have about 15 women in radio. Let's in give it up for the women in radio. Let's give them a round of applause. You held your own. You held your own. So. Yes. <laughs> Oh yeah, Tamara G. Yeah. Tamara G. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She ain't forget nobody. She she did. It I counted them in the fifteen. That's what's yeah. up. That's what's up. So, <clears throat> what are some of the things you've seen? What are some of the most recent accomplishments you've seen in women in radio lately? Um. So in March we had our event, um, our dinner in Miami, which was our first dinner. We had a bunch of women come out. We had Jill Strada, Felicia Monet, K. Fox speak about being a woman in radio. Um, we got trademarked. Uh, <laughs> All right. That was. Um, we just celebrated our one year anniversary in July. I mean, there's just amazing things going on for us right now. That's right. And Claudia, I know. For me, when you told me the Bitcoin story for Tiger Direct, that was big. Especially, uh, we had a conversation of uh, Record Graham. Again, somebody else in the music and media industry is doing their ICO. They're doing initial coin. Uh, raised for, I think, $300,000, which is pretty dope. So with what you're doing in social media, and I'm just going to be honest, besides Gary V, I think pretty much females run social media. If you really want to make a plug, you got to have a female on your team. Mm -hmm. So what are you seeing as some of the trends right now or some of the big breakthroughs for you in the social media world? Definitely. Um, So... A big part of social media is the fact that, you know, it is about people and you do have to have a lot of emotional intelligence. And I think that's why women are there. They gravitate a little more towards it. So I do believe that women are better with people and we can relate to people and we have that connection where we do care and we provide that service. And part of any social media strategy entails that emotional intelligence. It requires that customer service aspect. And it 
it, it allows you to, to really connect with your customers. And women are really good at that connection. I agree with that. I just cannot resist right now <laughs> to oh. say something about uh, women having more emotional intelligence. I do think that men have emotional in intelligence. It's just in a different I way, agree. right? Yeah. So you guys pay attention to more... Uh, you guys pay attention to different things you know, like women, you know, that's emotional for you guys. Like, shout out to that Beard Game Matters group that blew up over the past <laughs> week. <laughs> I'm not even going to go there with you. I'm just going to... I mean... I couldn't help it. I had to. I mean, mm -hmm. the only thing that's not going to help you ladies out in the long run when you realize what beard means stand for, they looking for a beard for their alternative lifestyle, but... It's not going to work out, out. Well in the long run. So. Down low. <laughs> Wait, I feel like y'all just bust something out. Let's move on. Let's move on. That's, that's what okay. I wanted you to do. Yes. So, <laughs> Megan, mm -hmm. what are some of the things we need to be accomplishing? Because to me, uh, radio, internet radio is a lot stronger than a lot of people think, mm -hmm. which podcasts are a lot more listened to than most people think. Um, I've actually had executives from PBS reach out to us and be like, hey, we love the show, but we would prefer you just make it a podcast so we can listen to it on the way to work, which I was honored to hear that. That was dope. So to me, extraterrestrial radio is kind of dying out. Um, when you start thinking about streaming music and you start thinking about the power of internet radio. So where do you see these trends going and how long before internet radio is equally as powerful with advertisement breaking records as extraterrestrial radio? Well, um, I went to a conference about a couple weeks ago, and this is one of our main problems in the radio industry. Um, besides the radio industry being owned by people who are like 70 years old, so they don't really understand the new age. But one thing about radio and local radio is that there's always going to be a local connection. So if you hear your favorite radio host in Miami, they're gonna be talking about Miami, but your favorite podcaster may not. So it's the emotional connection that keeps radio going. It's local, it's live, and it kind of sucks that a lot of radio is going syndicated, like the Breakfast Clubs and the Ricky Smiley's and things like that. All power to them, get your money, of course, but when it comes to like real old school radio, being live and local is, the best to me. I mean, I love podcasts. I listen to them all the time, but I love radio because that's how I grew up. That's a dope perspective. That kind of reminds me of like everything Petey Green went through when he was a voice for DC. Mm -hmm. And I can see what you're saying. When something's syndicated, mm -hmm. it's not as personal to the issues that's right. going on. All, I mean, you only have so much time on the air. So you can only talk it's about maybe the top six to seven topics. Right. So you don't get to address the issues that's going on in your community. Right. Hmm. So do you feel... That's the strategy for internet radio, for them to understand, even though the world can hear you, you still need to focus your energy to a smaller demographic or a smaller market? Well, I'm really focused just on regular radio. <laughs> so my strategy for the everyday radio is to how are we going to focus on the people in our cities okay. and our towns? So that's Same, what yeah, I really of, look at okay. and look for. Um, what are we doing? to like, are we out in the community? What are we really doing to help these people in our community? And I think that's what radio needs to look at. And also looking at streaming as well. Um, at the conference we talked to, I believe it was Ford and about how we can stream in their cars and things like that, just regular radio. And then we talked to Avis, how you could rent a car and it would still play the genre of whatever radio you like to listen to when you get in the car. So we're just trying to like, keep radio alive and more people listen to radio than most people think mm -hmm. so yeah. it's still alive but we just have to do some work mm. you I know i okay. have to say that i love radio local radio because that's what helps me keep an ear to the music in my community if i do not listen to local radio i really won't know like don't know who's what's the going new on. person right. in miami who has a new hot song in miami like, you know, if I wasn't listening to local radio, I would have never heard that ball greasy, <laughs> nice and slow. True. <laughs> That's why I asked the sound effect. Self <laughs> All right, here's a question, though. Uh, Wendy Williams, woman in radio, right? 
I feel like a lot of people, when they're in radio and then they leave from ludicrous, just in general, no matter what the gender, they kind of leave radio and you never hear about it. So, like, a lot of people don't know Wendy Williams' start, why she is where she got to. Reasonable Doubt, she was on the Jay-Z album Man. interviewing her. But yes. tell us uh, how you feel about that and talk about, I guess, kind of like transition and like really that world of really appreciating and talking about it and then taking it somewhere else, but making that connection for everybody to know your career. Right. So um, I'm all about anything else. I think I would still keep radio as my background because that's me. I can't really speak for Wendy or like Lala started in radio in Atlanta right. with Ludacris, mm -hmm. but we don't really know Lala from doing radio at all. Most of us don't. So, I mean, I guess it's just, up to them to keep it alive or to fall back on their roots and to help those girls who want to um, do radio and like give them the best help they can. <laughs> <laughs> it's something to think about too. The random yeah. shout out from Della's over there. Uh, so okay. <laughs> um, social media is in the tech world, social media is the new radio um, mm -hmm. and you see a lot of content changes. Uh, most significant change is whether people are noticing or not, Facebook is going to become its own TV station, uh, TV, TV network. That's why you have Facebook Watch. Facebook Watch, you can now stream for four and a half hours straight, streaming live. Uh, Instagram went up to a minute. Now they have a live. Twitter, you can now post two and a half to four minute videos. It used to only be 15 to 45 seconds. So, Claudia, well, what you're seeing is kind of weird because you guys inherently we'll have to work together but it's a competitive market to bring radio and social media together mm -hmm. so with what you're developing yourself claudia how do you see making these two worlds work because sometimes social media can get a little too trendy to where it doesn't talk about topics because i went on twitter look at six different cities and six cities are talking about the same thing and i'm like all y'all can't be going through the same thing. You know, y'all are in six different cities. So how do you make these worlds work together? Or how has it become a challenge for you and your, your professional career? Definitely. Um, I've actually always thought of social media as replacing TV, replacing radio. But at the same time, like you said, it, they're not really replacing them. They're more complementing them. So Talking to the mic. Just look They, they complement them more than ever. So like TV and social media, they... They mesh so well on Twitter. Um, radio and social media, they mesh so well on Facebook Live, like Instagram, YouTube. So honestly, it just comes down to branding. So the radio host has to take it upon themselves to create a persona, somebody that people want to follow because we are in a me economy and people care about themselves. And they don't care about the radio station. They care about how they can relate to the people in that radio station. So it just, those worlds collide when you create a brand for yourself. When you say, hey, audience, this is who I am. Come and relate to me and, and listen to my show. And that's what brings people here. Like, I'm sure everyone here relates to you, to you guys, to all of us on some way. Like, they're, they're here for, for your voice because you're, you brought them here and you're like, I'm sarcastic you created a brand for yourself, you know? You, right. You've created a brand for who you are and so that's why people care to listen to you. So in this me economy, we have to think about how, can, wh how am I providing the viewers value? Why do they care to hear what I'm saying? Okay. And that's when these worlds collide, when you tell them why they should care. Q, before you ask your next question, this question is for both of you ladies. Mm -hmm. I've always said, and I've actually, we made it as far as some upper levels of a radio station. I don't understand why we don't have a breakfast club for South Florida. I don't understand why nobody has taken it upon themselves to pick a radio station and pretty much replicate the breakfast club formula, but focus on guests and people from South Florida. What would it take to make something like that successful or replace that question, why do you think we don't have that kind of mindset here in South Florida? Um, I'll go for this one. Um, a lot of the decisions that are made um, when it comes to radio are made from people who aren't even living in our city, like 499 Jams, the headquarters in Atlanta. So they would really have to see something they really, really like 
like really, 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 really like in order for something like that to happen. And it's taking a gamble. People don't want to risk their money on something like that. I mean, it would be awesome. I would be all for it because sometimes the breakfast club messes up and they talk about New York and you're just sitting in Miami and you're like, okay, that has nothing to do with me. So yeah, most of the decisions are made from different cities. So I really don't have a like solid answer for you, but it would have to be something that they could really, really market. I mean, between trends. All right. So let's, I mean, let's, Let's just break this down. And I did a little research on social media today to have this conversation, Claudia. So the information is about four hours old, so it could be totally different by now. Yeah. But trending, Carmelo Anthony leaves New York. Mm -hmm. I don't know when the last dope hip-hop album has come out of New York, period. Most music is coming from Atlanta and wherever else in the world. It's not New York hip-hop. Love and hip-hop is garbage. Which one? Which city? All of them. Uh, you all of them. Just <laughs> throw a pen and wherever it lands, all of them garbage. So my thing is, is it only because New York has a more hustle and get it done mentality versus in Miami, in South Florida, we tend to wait for something to come to us because doing a breakfast club of the South doesn't really, really take somebody else's permission. It would just take a community working together. Charmaine had people he could reach out to and make those connections. Uh, his DJ had people and they supported each other. I feel we still have that, that tri-county disconnect. People in Palm Beach don't mess with people in Fort Lauderdale. People in Fort Lauderdale don't mess with people in Dade County. We just don't have no connectivity in a 60-mile radius where we act like we just can't build something together. So is it really the people of power? Or is it the people in the community just not wanting to work together to oversee the power? I mean, if you would want it on like a station, like a 99 But that's what I'm saying, dude. But that's where Claudia comes in. Oh, okay. And that's where you come in. Do we really need a station to make something like that happen? If you become the voice, you can't control social media. We can go buy a domain. We could go right now. Dante could get on his phone. We could buy a breakfast club of South Florida. Mm -hmm. Or we could buy the the South Florida brunch, whatever we want to call it. Mm -hmm. Get a DJ, get you a female, follow the exact same formula, and just get people from South Florida to start being on the show. Why couldn't we be just as dominant? People in New York want to be in Miami. Right. Well, people Mike, around the world want to come right down there. here. I think that when, when people think about Miami and the people who may be living in Miami as well or flock here, I think they are in vacation mode. Like you said, New York is more hustle, more grind. At least that's the perception. But here in South Florida, like, we're more, you know, we're in Wynwood right now. And we're kind of just walking down the street in our flowy dresses and T-shirts. and Right, because the only person that got a podcast that got picked up was somebody from New York. Nori came down here, started Drink Champs with DJ Effin. It got picked up by Ciroc, which, of course, ultimately landed them on Revolt TV. Like, where's our support? I also think it's also the price you pay for being a melting pot. So in Atlanta, mm. in New York, you, you can connect better with your community and it's larger. In Miami, even though, you know, for example, I'm Hispanic and you can oh, say, she's about Miami's to preach. Full, oh, throw the theme music on. She's about to say it. Like, you know, with earthquakes happening in Mexico and Puerto Rico and all these different Hispanic communities, and you see how like everyone flocks to to their own community. So if we all came together as one, imagine how much help we can provide versus just differentiating our help based on who we can relate to. So it's the price you pay for being a melting Everybody pot. Everybody on my team has heard me make this statement. South Florida is a melting pot from afar. Once you look inside that pot, there's all kind of dividers, just like yeah. a gerrymandering map of the Republicans that's separating us and we really don't work together. Yeah. So from afar... It, it does look and smell and appear to be a melting pot. Because, yeah, you got little Haiti, but how many people from North Miami Beach have actually been to a, the Culture Center in Little Haiti? Exactly. Like, we're all here, but we don't mesh together. Exactly. So it's like no flavor in the pot. All the mm -hmm. ingredients are separated once you get inside that pot. Yeah. Well, that's where I think the power of social media comes in. Mm -hmm. And I think it's... Uh, amazing and powerful that the two of you are here on the panel with us tonight. I think they should start a show. <laughs> yeah. 
the audience says yes. Um, so, uh, Claudia, would, would you not agree or what do you think uh, we need to do to go ahead and make that happen? Because it's not that there's not talent and dynamic um, people here in the community already, but what would be some steps that you would suggest to just do a Miami, you know, digital grass of the South takeover? Like, I, I want to take over. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, like, it, it's up to us. Like, we're, we're a generation that we really do want to do these things and we want to come together. Like, I, the reason I'm up here on stage is because I was having a meeting with a colleague on a Monday at 6 p.m. <laughs> and he's like, oh, yeah, um, this is a really great, like, black tech event. And you have a lot of great speakers and it's like really popping here on Monday nights and Michael Hall organizes it. And I reached out to you and I was like, Michael Hall, if you ever need a speaker, right. reach don't out to like me. Don't act like you don't got your name, Trey. Yeah, <laughs> and it, it didn't stop me. Like the fact that he said it's a black tech event, like I wasn't like, oh, I'm not, a, I'm not gonna like be able to present or speak at this event. I was just like, oh, this is so awesome. Like I wanna be a part of it. I'm gonna reach out to Michael and I did and right. I'm here now. Then so that's what it takes. But the fact that you said a black tech event, I want to add to that. And then, um, um, Megan, I got something for you. This is the part that I really like that you touched on. A lot of people miss. A black tech event is to me the equivalent of a woman's empowerment event, but men decide not to show up. Thank you. Yes. Right. And I've been just because yes. it's a, 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 a woman's empowerment event. Men, you can't tell me that you support women, but you don't go to the event that's empowering them. And so it's very hard when we have, and you know what? I'm so glad you set this up so I can finally say it on camera. Thank you. It's so hard for me to have large corporations in South Florida that preach the aspect of inclusion. And I've seen you sponsor larger events, Emerge Americas, but I haven't seen you sponsor Black Tech Week. It's one thing to tell me you want to be inclusive, but your budget and your pockets only go to one aspect. So... I don't remember who made the quote, but I'm just going to say this. It's hard for me to believe what you say when I can watch what you do. So you can't tell me you support an inclusive community, but you only come out and support segregated elements. So if you are a man telling me that you actually believe in empowering women, but you don't go to a woman empowerment event, you're actually lying. You're not supporting. You don't support from the sidelines, just saying. So if you're somebody telling me that you believe in Black Tech Week and you want to see more minorities in technology, but you're not showing up at these events, I don't believe you. Because that's what happened. We went through two years of nothing but hype of this whole diversity and inclusion. It's now a dead topic and there's no, a there's no actions. We didn't just give out Miss Jessie's products to black women with natural hair. We gave it to every beautiful woman that has hair because that's the way she builds her products. Right. So until people fix that... Fuck you. Um, but that's how I really I, feel about that. I was um, recently at a women in banking event, and, and they, the women uh, like at the panel, they were like, oh, yes, all of the bankers sent the women from their banks to a women in, a women in banking event. So there were like... So why educate men. a man? Not because yeah. the man ain't sexist and don't know how to treat a woman and he's just a misogynistic asshole. He don't need the... He don't need the training. We're just, just going to train the women. women that already get it. Yeah. So stupid. So, so anyways, Claudia, Megan, Claudia, my question oh. to you on camera is, Dante's going to hate me. David will might dislike it. Self more. How do we set you up to become the Breakfast Club of the South? What support do you need from us to make this happen? Sponsorships, advertisement dollars. That's what makes things work. And I like to talk about money. So, so sponsorship. We're going to put together a platform. We'll reach out to Chris Keynes of the Knight Foundation. Mm -hmm. See if we can make that part happen. You said advertisements. So we're going to reach out to everybody. We're going to put together a list. I think what we should do is put together a list of everybody that sponsored Emerge Americas and make them support yes. you and put yes. their money behind you. Yes. That's what we should do. I have one for you. Actually, every big <laughs> conference that comes you. down here, we should just pull them all out yeah. and just make a list and put the money together. I'm just tired of this. I mean, this is a point where I'm at, I'm at a point in my life, die empty. So some people are like, oh, why are you just going to give a show away? Because you know what? When I die, the legacy will be that I help Megan go to the next level. Thank That's you. the thing. You die by giving to others and your legacy will live forever. So when I die, what y'all going to remember is the content I left. You're not going to remember me. I'm a jerk anyways. That's what I'm supposed to be. I'm the one that's going to fight and kick open the doors because somebody got to get that first round of bullets when they kick the door open, right? Everybody ain't willing to kick the door down. But if you got a vest on, you can only get hurt so much. You get bruised up, you get back up. But um. 
that's what a man is supposed to do, protect his women. So that's what I'm here to do. That's what women do Ball. too. We protect our men. You trying You're to get right. cool points. <laughs> <laughs> trying to get married, dude. I got to figure out. I mean, in take. general, we know women run the world. Yeah. We do. We do. And if you're a man, you're smart enough to align yourself with those women. Yeah. Hence the panel today. Right. Exactly. With, with all yeah. this bad karma and all these damn hurricanes, God was like, you need to surround yourself by something. So I have a question for Claudia. Claudia, with all of the amazing campaigns that you've ran on social media for these big corporations, and we're talking about you know, creating this amazing platform for Megan and supporting her um, and everyone uh, to become the breakfast clubs of where they are. How do you use positive psychology mm. to evoke those emotions in people that make them want to reach into their pockets and purses and write those big checks and say, here you go, Megan. Back to the emotions. Let's go. Uh, yeah, with emotions. I mean, that's really all it comes down to. People actually release uh, chemicals in their brain called dopamine when they're on social media and you're getting likes and comments and your brain is releasing all these chemicals that you're getting addicted to so they're they are attracted to that co that positive content and making sure that you're delivering that is what's going to get people to buy your product so like I said before we're we're in a very egocentric stage and it's in marketing it's the age of the customer and they're in control so you have to make it about them. You, you have to make them feel empowered and, and happy that they're giving you their money because we are a generation of why. Like, why should I give you my money? Why, why do you need my support? So providing that why through social media is what campaigns are all about. Uh, it's, it's what you're, you're doing. You're educating your crowd, your demographic. Like, you're telling them, this is what I want you to know about our brand. So using psychology to communicate to communicate that in a positive way is the only way to do it and i actually studied psychology in college so it's yeah. the number one reason why i love social media Mike. in other words she was running extra game when she was dating in college so Mike. yeah at an event i had about maybe a couple of years ago you said something i had a um i had a topic for a panel that you were on and it was called powering people in tech or something like that. And you said something to me. You said technology does not empower. No, you said technology doesn't move people or um, power people. It's the people that empower the technology. Mm -hmm. Something like that, right? Right. Yep. Okay, so I just had a thought as Claudia was speaking, which is, are e is emotional intelligence or are emotions really what's driving technology? Because when we're creating apps or we're innovating and creating new things, we're doing it in response to what people are wanting, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. We're, it's our innate nature to want to connect and be a part of communities. And that's what these digital platforms provide to us. They give us communities that like exactly what we like, want to see exactly what we want to see, and we create groups within these communities. And so it, it's all just feeding our innate nature to want to be connected and want to feel and understand other humans. Like, if you really think about it, when you follow somebody on Instagram or any social media platform, you you relate to that person, and that's why you're you're following them. So so it's either yeah. a form of relation or a, yeah. a good out for insecurity. Yeah, um, exactly. It just depends on how you look at it. So we got to wrap this up with our quick six. So ladies, if you were paying attention earlier, you kind of know what kind of questions. So you know, four to five word responses shouldn't take you that long. Uh, I don't even know what you're drinking. It looks like you're drinking some kind of wine or something. But for you ladies, what's the drink of choice? Cranberry vodka. Cranberry vodka, okay. Makers on the rocks. Makers, oh wow. It's melted. It's a real drink right there. Boy. <laughs> Going strong. Go ahead, Q. Uh, for both of you ladies, favorite DJs locally and nationally. Um, Let's go local. Let's keep it local. Local, oh. uh, DJ Nasty for sure. Oh, fam, you, Tallahassee. Classic dude. That's right. Go ahead. DJ Sandino. That's my brother. So. <laughs> I don't know any other DJs. That's all right. We shout them out. That's what you do. <laughs> shout out your brother. All right. So if you had to have a song or an album to describe your career, what would that song or album be? Um, this 
girl is on fire. Okay. Okay. For a minute, I thought she was going to say, this is how we do. <laughs> that's, all, that's my song. I, I don't even know. I just, there's so many songs. Just pick one. Whichever one just hit your soul right now. That one. Go. Go. <laughs> DJ Nasty be ripping Yo. it up. Like, I know, but the... those songs are kind of ratchet. That's my old life. <laughs> that's my old life. <laughs> um, that's, that's, before pre, she, pre that's before she got this boulder on her ring. Her, boy, oh, my God. I that, know. that ring has been blinding me <laughs> um, all night. Uh, I don't know. The radio woman doesn't have a song. There's too Isn't many songs. Just pick one. Pick an album. <laughs> All right, we got to move on. She, she didn't pass the 30-second rule. Go ahead, Q. Uh, favorite TV personality? Mm, that's a good one. It's going like to be even from harder. from a reality show or like I'm whatever sure you, comes to Yeah, go with your reality show. Let's talk I about love, it. Like, I love ratchet television. <laughs> it's so okay. We all have My favorite a... person right now has to be like Charmaine from Black Ink because she does radio too. And she's just like super crazy. But she's herself. Okay. So is that, I like is that. that Black Ink New York or Black Ink Chicago? Chicago. 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 Calm down, Chicago. Chicago. Calm down, Seth Moore. <laughs> we get it. Go ahead. Like go ahead. My favorite would be uh, Alana Glazer from Broad City. <laughs> she got the singing and the sound of What was that dance? All right, Q, okay. I need you to give me one more so I can close it out. Uh, so I'm going to go in true Q fashion and say, what is your favorite Ratchet song? There we go. I'm that sorry. Like, that should help. No, that helps them. Let's pick I, I got to, you know. <laughs> Since you said ball greasy earlier, you might as well stay Ratchet. I'm, I'm saying. Uh, go, ahead, go ahead. Right now, it's Rake It Up. Break it up. Uh, okay. Oh, and you kept it clean. Okay. I'm old on that. Right now for me is Despacito. Oh, yes. <laughs> is that ratchet, though? No. Well, by now it is. It's I mean, about to be up. If, you by know what? now, yes. if you still yes, like that is. song. <laughs> Coming from the DJ. Yes, it is. <laughs> All DJs like that song. It's I just know Justin, Ratchetto. That's I just know, I know Justin Bieber got ethered by Marilyn Manson. That he was, makes it ratchet. That was classic. <laughs> oh, Marilyn wow. Manson just ethered Justin Bieber. Um, so, last question for both of you ladies. Five years from now, perfect headline representing you or your company or your dreams and aspiration, Miami Herald Sun Sentinel. What does that headline read? Um, Megan Taylor, founder of Women in Radio, opens up first radio station in South Florida owned by a black woman. That's All a right. really long title, but right. you get it. Yes. <laughs> Got it. Claudia? Mine would be uh, Claudia Sandino, first person in her family to ever graduate college. Oh, fucking makes it! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I, uh, we need a vodka and cranberry, and we need a maker's mark on the rocks for the ladies. <laughs> you want to get to know them better? Join them at the bar. But let's give a round of applause for these ladies. <laughs> so. Uh, very shortly, right after this, we'll be getting into Tech Beats and Bites karaoke, so we need some brave souls. But once again, thank you to our sponsors. Uh, that's going to be World Famous House of Mac, Digital Grass, Knight Foundation, and Miss Jessie's. And we look forward to seeing you all next week, every Monday, 6 o'clock, sunset conversation start right before the sunset. We'll talk to you later. Peace. Peace.